Hey YouTube, welcome to my complete Salamangrate Great Guide for Master Duel. So I've been wanting to make this video for quite a while, uh, finally got around to doing it. And so yeah, the, hopefully this will be very informative for those who want to play Salad in Master Duel. And you know, obviously you can take some of these uh, tips over into the regular TCG or what have you. But we're going to be mainly focusing on how to play this deck within Master Duel because the Master Duel rules are you know slightly different to the ones in the tcg so mainly going to be focusing on this so i thought we'd start off by going through all the cards in the deck learning exactly what they do really getting a a good grasp on on how to use them then we'll go into some of the strengths and weaknesses of the deck i think it's very important that you know you get a good grasp of what your deck is weak at so you can you know plan in advance in advance for that and and understand what kind of decks that you should have an easier matchup against what you should be doing well against what decks you should pretty much be getting wins against every single time regardless of going first or second so we can talk about all these things and then last we'll just go through some specific combos or specific tips uh with uh certain cards that i think everyone should know if you want to play salad to a to a high level you know there's certainly going to be lots more that that i could teach you or i could say but you know for now i think all the stuff in this video is going to give you a good overall understanding of the salamangrate great deck and how you should be playing it and pretty much give you enough info to hopefully get you to at least platinum in in master duel as long as you've been a you know maybe you've been struggling to get to, to platinum and you wanted a, a a deck to help you do that i think this deck is very very good for that so yeah, without further ado, let's just jump right into the deck. So we're going to do like a little mini profile, but I'm going to be talking about it slightly in a different way just to give some more strategy tips. So uh, one thing to note is that Salamangre is well known for being a deck that can run many, many hand traps. So Maxi, Ash, Imperm, Baylor, even at one point in the TCG, we would run cards like uh, Fantastical Dragon, Phantasme. Depending on the format, also adding a droll in there would be would be definitely viable. Uh, but in this game, because Salamangrate has you know a couple of cards that are you know in this deck that aren't actually legal in the TCG, I've decided to switch it up a little and go for a slightly less heavy hand trap lineup. I still would like to get to a nine hand trap, as you can see. Right now, we're running two max C. Three Ash and three Imperm. I want to run the third Max C. Obviously, I'm just deciding on whether I want to spend my my crafting points on that right now. But uh, a, an important thing to note is like with the Ash, like Ash is I think a a absolute must in this deck, no matter what, because in this deck we are recurring our materials from the graveyard quite a lot, and with Sunlight Wolf, we can add a Fire Monster back from our graveyard to our hand every time we summon. A monster to his own sunlight wolf points to so we can keep adding back the ash blossom because it is a fire as you can see so we want to be utilizing that as much as possible because ash is a, such a good good card other than that you want to be adding back something like the gazelle but uh i think ash is a is a must uh and the thing with this deck is that you're you're using a lot of draw power so we have for example we have two or excuse me three goodness Three flame buffalo and three desires so we're going to be drawing quite a few cards if you're in a position to use foxy's effect you could draw a card there too but yeah anyway but before i get too ahead of myself let's talk about the actual individual effects of the main deck monsters other than hand traps so uh i'm running 2c archiver so basically what this card does is it special summons itself from the hand or grave when you special summon a monster to a zone a link monster points to so if we have like a Balinx in our extra monster zone and we summon a Spinny to the zone it points to, because it points straight down, uh, we can trigger the Sea Archiver in hand or grave to special summon it, although banish it when it leaves the field. So the reason we play this is because it's an engine that we use to get into our Mirage Stallio as effectively and quickly as possible. So Mirage Stallio needs two level three monsters. And so Foxy, Gazelle, Spinny, uh, Buffalo and C Archiver are all level three. Uh, we're not going to be using Buffalo really to go into a uh, uh, 
Mirage Stalio because of its effects. We'd rather get the, the draws off it, but all the other ones are going to be used to make this. And so that's why we're, we're using this. So we want to try and get to our Mirage Stalio as quickly as possible. Our Mirage Stalio lets us detach a material and special summon a Salamangrate monster from our deck. So this is what helps us get out our Gazelle. Uh, so our Gazelle is really the main focal point of the deck. It allows you to special summon itself when a Salad Monster leaves the field. And once it's special summoned, you can send a Salad Monster or card, actually any Salad card, from your deck to your grave. So you can send a Salad Monster to keep extending. You can send one of the spells or traps to uh, get some uh, to add them back and get some interruption for your opponent's turn. You can get all kinds of stuff depending on on the situation. So that's why we want to get some Rosh Stalio because with only one Gazelle in our deck, you know it's not the easiest thing to draw into. Um, so we're playing three Flame Buffalo. This is a really important card because this is our main normal summon of the deck. So basically what this says is when it leaves the field, so in other words, when we link summon it for our our uh, Bailinx, when we send it to the grave for our Bailinx, we can trigger its effect, discard one Cybers monster, and if you do, draw two cards, which is a really good effect. And the reason it's so good in this deck is because the Salamangrate Bailinx on summon is going to add the field spell, Salamangrate Sanctuary. And so this is really important because we're going to be able to chain block the Flame Buffalo by activating the Flame Buffalo as Chain Link 1 and the Bailings as Chain Link 2 to protect the Buffalo from being negated. So this is a really important thing to note in this deck to make sure you activate Buffalo first and Bailings second. Now, if you do draw the Sanctuary in your opening hand, you're obviously not going to be able to uh, chain block the Buffalo, but you'll still have the uh, option to get the effect. So hopefully your opponent doesn't have something like Ash. Buffalo is your main normal summon. It's the one that really helps you get into your plays and gain card advantage. Now we are running three Foxy. This is a really important card, and I want to stress this like a lot. In Master Duel, this card I think is a must at three. I, I don't think playing anything less is correct, not by any stretch of the imagination, because of how common decks or cards like uh, Skill Drain, Goes and Match, Summon Limit, these cards are running rampant in Eldritch decks and in, uh, what what are they called? Uh, oh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's like the Tribute Summon the Spell and Trap deck. Uh, you know, that that those kind of decks are running these face-up continuous traps that can really do a lot of damage to you. And it's really important to have a way to out those kinds of cards. And what Salamangri Foxy does is if there's a face-up spell or trap on the field, you can discard a Salamangri card, any Salamangri card, so it doesn't even have to be a monster, and you can special summon it from your grave and then destroy one face-up spell or trap on the field. Now, this whole effect is one effect, and it resolves in the graveyard, which means you can bring it out onto the field and then pop a skill drain without the skill drain being able to stop it. So it's very important to know. Um, most people will just normal summon this and keep it in the grave for the ability to extend. Uh, but sometimes it's it's normal summon effects where you can excavate the top three cards of your deck and add a Salamangrate monster does come up. Um, or excuse me, a Salamangrate card. It does come up, and I seem to use it a lot more than other people. But I still agree that, you know, many times it's better just to normal summon it, not use its effects. Because you can only use one effect. So if you normal summon it and use its excavate effect, you are now locked out of using its reborn effect. So you need to make sure that you're on top of uh, which effect you've used this turn and which one you think was going to be more important. Gazelle I've already talked about briefly, but it's just it's the main focal point of the deck. I'm so happy I got mine in the royal finish. Uh, yeah, just main focal point of the deck your best uh, searcher probably uh we are playing three spinny again i think this is pretty um pretty standard i know some people play two but again i don't think that's right um for either tcg or master duel uh it's just such a good card to have and it's just a great extender so you can discard it from your hand to target a uh, monster on the field if there's a salamangrate card uh on your side of the field and then you can 
reborn it from the graveyard by uh or if you have a salamander great monster or even if it's just a salamander great card right if you control salamander great monster okay it has to be a monster other than spinning you can reborn it but banish it when it leaves the field and so it's quite often you'll be using spinny and maybe a sea archiver to make mirage stallio an, imp an important thing to remember especially for new players even though these cards say banish when it leaves the field when you xyz summon on top of them and even when they should be leaving the field and you detach them they actually no longer are considered the same cards and you no longer have to banish them so you get to keep the resources so when you detach the material it's just going to go back to the grave where you can use it again next turn instead of banishing it never to be used again so it's an important thing to know falco is a very good card and it's not very often utilized in the best way people don't usually take advantage of it in the way you know i think people should because it can be very strong so first of all it can target one salaman great monster you control while in the grave bounce it back to your hand and then special summon it an important thing to note that i see a lot of like new salaman great players doing is do not bounce back a link monster because this card has to bounce the monster back specifically to your hand otherwise it won't summon itself out it'll just bounce it back to your hand um like the the, the Link Monster will go back to your extra deck, but you won't get the summon out because the card has specifically has to go back to the hand. That's an important thing to keep in mind. Um, in addition, it also, I think the more, you know, important aspect of this card, the, the one I think that really separates the good Salaman Great players from the decent ones, are the ones who can utilize its first effect. So when it's sent to the graveyard, you can target one spell or trap in the grave, set it to your field. So this is a really great way of if you can find a way of resetting a roar that you've already used this turn or even a rage during your opponent's turn so it's live on the follow-up turn that is really really strong and it's not always the easiest excuse me it's not always the easiest thing to do but when you can do it it's something i would definitely recommend trying to to get a handle of because it really helps in the in the long run. It really helps you uh, secure boards and and you know get those wins that you might not have gotten otherwise because you have that one extra negate or one extra card that can pop on your field. Really, really important one and really something to keep in mind. Um, two Jack Jaguar is I think standard in most decks. We run two because we don't want to banish one uh, or excuse me both with desires and desires is a pretty decent staple in the salad deck so uh, jack jack war is one of your best recurrence uh cards in the main deck so basically when you have a salamander great monster that has a a uh a link monster that has a zone that's open that points to like say sunlight wolf it has a zone underneath it you can target one other salamander great monster in your graveyard while well, it's in the graveyard as well return that monster to the deck and then special summon the jaguar so you can put back another Sunlight Wolf, or maybe you can put back a Helio or the Mirage Stallio. And maybe if you really need to, put back one of your other Salamander Great Monsters in the grave if you really need that extender. Uh, it's a really, really good card, and it really helps you keep your, your resources uh, in your deck where you want them to be. Either in your deck or in your graveyard is, is, is really what Salamander Great thrives on, so... Uh, so yeah, uh, foul. This is like kind of a, a personal choice. I like playing the one foul because it really helps make Baguska a lot, a lot easier to get to. Um, it basically it says whenever a Salamander monster is special summoned, you can special summon this card from your hand. That's a really easy summoning condition, and it's a really easy rank or not rank four, level four to get out to uh, put a Baguska on your board, as well as having any other interruptions that that you have uh it has another effect where you can target a back row your opponent has and they can't your opponent can't activate that back row for the rest of the turn which is kind of you know it does come up occasionally but it's not not too common that that we end up using that mainly it's just the uh the extender three pot of desires pretty simple we want to draw cards in this deck and banishing cards doesn't really matter too much because 
usually if we can we're gonna search out for something like our sanctuary or our gazelle before we desires once we get our uh, sanctuary and our gazelle out of the deck we're basically fine to desires as many times as we want you know maybe not the third time but at the ver desiring twice is not that big of a deal in this deck you just want resources to play with so that's that one field spell is just you know really important because it helps you relink your salad monsters which is a really important part of getting some of their effects so not a lot to say there uh one will this is basically a out to i guess nibiru as well as helping you extend more basically you can either special summon one salad monster from your hand or graveyard or you can special summon up to the well let me put it this way if you have a link monster that has been relinked using the same monster as material you can send this to the graveyard from the field to the grave and special summon that many monsters up to its link rating from your grave uh and i believe it has to be in defense yeah in defense so it's a it's a pretty good card um and it's a really important one i think it's difficult to say how many of this you should run i don't think running three is ever really worth it uh or right running two is okay too um i'd like to run more of this it's, we're just talking about you know difficulty with space finding the space for it in this deck so i think running one is okay uh i'm deciding to run with two cosmic cyclone because cosmic cyclone is so important or any back row hate is so important in this deck to be honest or in this game rather so because eldlich because all these kinds of back row decks are rampant in master duel having some dedicated back row removal and can really win you a game i've i've had times where i've gone first against against the opponents who've set four or five and pass and i I've, I've had a rage and a cyclone and I'm, I'm able to take out a lot of their back row before they can even you know get it to my turn so they can use it so it's really really important i'd also consider twin twister uh in this deck i think twin twister is one i'm actually going to be trying out soon to see which one i like better uh but for now i think cosmic is fine the uh, life point you know cost is not not that bad so yeah i think it's important to play these um we are playing two call by the graves we'd like our searches to go through we want our gazelle effect to dump from our deck to our grave to to go through and also just you know because we're summoning a decent amount in this deck uh, we don't want to have maxi up our butts, you know. It's it's such an annoying card to, to deal with. So I think having two cold by in pretty much any deck is is fine, you know. So yeah, uh, on to the circle. So there's three circle in this game. We can play with three Salamangrate circle, which I think is such a cool kind of aspect to have with this deck. Once again, um, an important thing to note with this is that. This is now another out to Nibiru that we have in our deck. So we have Foxy that can reborn itself as long as there's a face-up spell or trap. So if we have the field spell, we can reborn this. We have the Will, and we also have the Circle, which can uh, make a monster unaffected by uh, monster effects for the rest of the turn, uh, which stops Nibiru, essentially. The Nibiru still comes down, but it stops your monster from getting tributed, and so you're your rage and your roar and things like that are still going to be live. And on top of that, you can use it to search your deck for any of your Salaman great monsters either. So, or as well. So it's a very important card, you know, obviously to have at three. One card that's, that's missing from here is uh, sign at mining. You might think that like, it'd be crazy to have a deck without sign at mining. But to be honest, I just find having three circle is just much better. And I don't really have space for sign at mining. And I don't really think you need it uh, in the TCG definitely you need it but not here i think because we have three circle i think sign up mining takes a bit of a back seat uh, especially with the fact that i feel like we need some back row hate we need you know our hand traps uh maybe you could uh take out uh called buys for a couple of uh a couple of uh sign up mining but in my opinion you really don't need it in this version of the deck or in this this version of Yu-Gi-Oh. uh Impermanence is, you know, a pretty standard hand trap in this this deck. Uh, you know, we set a lot of back row, so people might might expect this to be here. But then again, we're not running best of three games, so people aren't going to know to add back row hate for an for a next game. So 
we can get away with running this pretty pretty easily and then we just run two of each trap again we don't want to banish with our desires and they're really strong and i'd like to ideally open at least one of them so having four i think is a is a good uh is a good ratio two of each i think is good one of each i've seen people play i just don't think that's enough especially if you're playing desires i think that's just absolutely wrong uh, mirage stallio we've gone over a little bit already but it's special summons a salad from the deck also when it's used for a link summon of a salad monster you can target one card on the field and return it to the hand uh, or one monster on the field excuse me so that's another uh, effect to keep in mind for it so it can also be a really good piece of removal that activates in the graveyard that you know some people might not think to play around uh, Baguska, we're basically summing this in defense position, which negates all of our opponents and our defense position monsters' uh, effects. So it's a really good and strong floodgate, and if we can make it, it's just a great addition to our to our board. Uh, if not, it's not a big deal, but it's a nice option to have. Uh, I'm going with the three Bailinks. Pretty standard, searches the field spell and can be banished from the grave to protect your salad cards from destruction. My battler card effect once per turn so pretty strong card uh one lingaribo uh when a trap card activates you can tribute this card and negate the effect and banish it so it's really good against the eldritch if your opponent has like a say let's say let's let's see if they have like either a sanguine or a conquistador and you negate that you're also banishing it so they're not going to get the recurl effect in the graveyard where they can banish it and and get its effect so that's a really good you know added bonus to it and also back row decks are very common in master duel so it's just there for, for for that as well so it's just a good option one level four lower cyber monster good to have this in the deck uh onto the nightmare phoenix this is uh you know this is i think up to the the player if they want to run this or something else like maybe splash mage but I think Nightmare Phoenix, again, it's more back row hate. I just think having a good amount of back row hate is really important in this deck. And sometimes you just need a little bit more than Cosmic or the Lingaribo. You know, I want to have a number of different ways of getting rid of some back row. And I think having Nightmare Phoenix is another good way of doing that. Uh, we can use, like, for example, uh, Mirage Stallio with Nightmare Phoenix. Let's see what else we can use even flame buffalo and we can chain block either the phoenix or the mirage stallio or the buffalo or whatever it is we're doing we can chain block it to help protect it you know it's it's i think just a good card just to have in master duel very useful update chamber this card basically allows us to use any monster that uses this card as a material a link material it gives that card the ability to attack twice per turn so we can make either a transcode or access code attack twice per turn, which is really good because th that's usually going to let us get game on board. So very important card. Uh, three Sunlight Wolf, absolutely mandatory. Excuse me, mandatory to run this at three. This card is basically what helps you uh, add all your fire monsters back to your hand and also add, lets you add your Sunlight, or excuse me, your Salaman Great Spells and Traps back to your hand from your graveyard so it's a, i'd say behind gazelle it's probably the most important deck or card in your deck excuse me uh so it's a really important card to be able to utilize uh, effectively and it's something that you know usually if i'm putting something back with like sunlight wolf or excuse me with jack jaguar goodness i can't can't talk right now um when I'm putting something back with Jack Jaguar's effect, usually I'm going to be putting back a Sunlight Wolf because I want to make sure I have a consistent uh, consistent amount of Sunlight Wolves in my extra deck that I can pull from if I need to, you know, go for game or I need to maybe, you know, go into a Heat Leo play, you know, and maybe my Heat Leo gets dealt with and I still need to have cards to come back. And that's why Sunlight Wolf is very strong because it's just very good recursion. Uh, the transcode talker just we use we go into it with an update jammer and one other monster go into transcode talker transcode talker brings back the update jammer from the grave and then we link those two into access code and then we get an access code that can attack twice that has uh, 5300 attack and can pop three cards on the field before attacking for game so it's a very good uh combo and a very important one and uh 
not cuttable in this deck. It's absolutely necessary to have this, uh, in my opinion. So, And then two Heat Leo. We don't need three of this. Um, it does come up a decent amount. I think when I first started playing this, I kind of like felt like cutting Heat Leo to like just one, and I did for quite a while. Cause I, and I don't think I was really using the deck as effectively as I could have been when I first started playing playing and which is you know not surprising i was i was still new to this deck quite a while back but uh after playing with this a long time being able to utilize heat leo is such a a good good thing to do it's such a strong card that not a lot of decks have something similar to this where they can just go into a, uh, a heat leo shuffle back a back row and then go into another heat leo shuffle back another back row it's a really strong thing to just help clear your opponent's board of a, of a pretty much anything other than maybe skill drink because that's going to stop your helio but still and then yeah access code this deck is access code go burr very very strong card so yeah uh that's it for the deck overview uh i think we're going to now get into the strengths and weaknesses of this deck and i'm gonna go over some of the uh the key tips i would i'd like to give in this this area and so yeah so while I talk about the strengths and weaknesses of this deck, I'm going to go into a couple of my uh, of my replays while playing this deck, just to kind of like have something in the background to talk over while while uh, while we discuss this. So one of the key things about this deck is that it's very resilient and it's very good at recurring its materials. And I think it's important to know that you always have should have I should say something in the graveyard to to help you combo in the next turn that's really an important aspect to this deck and being able to have stuff in the grave is just going to help you continue your combo it's going to help you deal with with lots of different interruptions like as you can see here i have a skill drain we're going to be able to get cards into our graveyard to summon out to get cards on board and still deal with a card like skill drain so we're going to discard the foxy we're going to get the spinny in the grave, summon out other stuff. Right here, I'm just kind of trying to bait out other traps before I break the skill drain with the foxy in grave. But then they have the ghost and match, which means I can only use fire. And now we're going to use the foxy to get rid of the skill drain. And then we can go into the nightmare phoenix. And then the nightmare phoenix can pop a back row. And we have the ash for the sanguine. And then we're going to, if I remember right, we're going to go into a Helio to get rid of the uh, other back row. So just a lot of different ways to play through boards and have materials in your graveyard. Like, so as you can see, we're going to have a Foxy, a Jack Jaguar in the grave. We also have a Balanx for protection. Uh, see, this is what really helps us uh, stay in games. It's this kind of resilience. It's having the the stuff in our grave that we can use on a turn-by-turn -turn basis. And so right here, they're going to go for the uh, Sanguine to get the Conk. But right now, this is not really a big deal because, as you can see, they're they're getting a couple of their cards off the field, and they have managed to get Heat Leo off the field. But we have a Balinx in Grave, which means regardless of what they do, we're going to keep our monster... And next turn, we just get another Balinx in the grave. And we can just keep our cards and our monsters alive by protecting with Balinx for that one conk. So our opponent's conk really essentially becomes pretty worthless. Uh, and being able to be resilient like this is one of this deck's really, really uh, strong points. So we're going to go into Balinx. I think here I misclick and don't activate the, the effect to get the field spell. Uh, but luckily, we have a way of getting out another monster. We can destroy the Gozen, then go into another Balinx, and then activate Balinx again this time, not forgetting to search the field spell. And then we can get Jack Jaguar back. As you can see, we can put back the Heat Leo. So now we can have two Heat Leos again. Then the Jack Jaguar is coming out, so we can make a, uh, uh, a Sunlight Wolf. Here, I think, you know, I was kind of trying to make my opponent force his his hand i was trying to make him you know attack into the lingaribo and not be able to get out a card like this uh 
and so it allowed me to set the imperm and I could put it in the same column as this that I knew this was here and I could negate it with the imperm. So yeah, I mean, Eldlich is like one of the best decks to come up against with, with this deck. You know, I have a number of different cards at my disposal that can, you know, deal with, with what Eldlich has to offer. And I really think, you know, I've seen so many people in like my comments say like, oh, I really hate Eldlich. Like, how do I play the back row with, with some of these decks? And I think Sun or not Sunlight Wolf, Salaman Greats can do this probably better than any other deck in the meta you know are they the best deck in the the meta here probably not but they are definitely up there and i think and i do think they are probably the best at dealing with back row um going second even without cards that you know you you like to draw like cosmics twin twisters lightning storms whatever it is you're playing and so as you can see we can go into a heat leo we can shuffle back one of their one of their cards uh, and we have another Ash that we can activate. Uh, I believe we we added back, yeah, we, we, we added back the Ash, I believe. So we can send this. We're going to be able to get this out, go into a Mirage Stalio, and get out another monster. And so to, regardless of what we want, we can get out, yeah, we get out the, uh, the, uh, the Foxy. I don't remember here, it didn't let me activate the cards I wanted to. I'm not really sure why, so like I couldn't end up activating Access Code Talker, even though I have stuff in the grave. I don't know why. Um, oh no, I just realized. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna pause it right here. This is a good. This is a good thing to actually remember because I forgot about this, and this is something that I'm sure many people do as well. So for a while, I've been confused as to why I couldn't use Access Code Talker's effects. It's because I use uh, Mirage Stallio's effect. So one thing you should know is that if you use Mirage Stallio's effect, a special summon from the deck, you are now locked in to fire monsters. Only fire monsters. Any 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 kind of monster. It doesn't have to be like XYZ or anything, but it has to be fire. So any monster that you summon that is not fire cannot use its effect. So that's, that's a really important thing to remember. So, you know, usually you... If you're going into Mirage Stallio, you're probably not going to access code OTK that turn. Or, in my opinion, you probably definitely shouldn't. Uh, so yeah, this is a good thing to keep in mind. And it's a good thing that I've actually just, just caught that now. And it's it's a mistake that, you know, it's it, it'll happen every now and then. But, you know, you want to try and avoid it as much as possible. Luckily, it doesn't, doesn't hurt us too much. We're still in a really good position. Um, our opponent's going to try and get out another Eldlich, but we really don't want that to happen, so we're going to Ash that. And uh, it looks like next next turn, we really have this game in the bag. All we have to deal with is two cards on their field. And we have a set Roar. They're going to be able to set a card with the Sanguine from the Grave, but again, we don't really care about that because they can't activate it this turn. It's been set this turn, so that's how that works. So we get this out. I'm gonna go into a Sunlight Wolf. We want to add back the Conk uh, because that's the card that's in the defense position, and we really want to try and go for game. And so we're gonna get another recurrence of the Ash. Really, really strong. The fact that we can just recur our Ash back. I think we've recurred the Ash back like what twice in this uh, in this game. And now we can go into the Heat Leo. Get rid of that trap they just added. And then we're going to go into another Heat Leo and use this effect to drop our opponent's monster's attack down to 500 and uh, get the win. Or even 300 because we have Link Rebo in the grave. Yeah. So we're eventually going to get the win here. So basically, you know, I think this really shows the weakness of this deck. Or excuse me, not the weakness, the strength of this deck by showing just how resilient it is and how it can deal with back row very easily. So. I think it's a very, very good thing to, to know how to really just play through back row, have those options to just, you know, whatever it is that your opponent throws at you, whether it's a skill drain or a goes in or any other, you know, face up spell or trap they might have, that you have multiple ways of getting rid of them. Uh, and Salad does that better than, than most decks within the, its own engine. Okay, let's go ahead and watch another replay here. But now in this game, I want to talk a little more about the weaknesses that this deck has and how I think you should best go around 
playing around cards that can maybe deal with Salad in a, a much more efficient manner. So, first weakness, Nibiru. Now, I actually don't see Nibiru that much in in this game, but it is something that you should really be on guard for because it is a very strong card that can really do a lot of damage to Salad because a lot of the traps uh, require you to have the Salad Mangrate Link monsters on field. And you could, you know, pitch one Salad monster from your hand for the rage effect that, you know, just gets you one pop instead of two. But, you know, it's still reducing your, your ability to, to play the game by quite a bit. Um, another thing to keep in mind is thing like kaijus, like going heavy second, excuse me, going second heavy decks are really kind of problematic to, to play against because if your opponent has a kaiju, again, that's going to get your, your Salamangrit monster off the board very easily. So one way to play around this is if your opponent makes you go first, like for example, our opponent's just Lava Golem does. So they probably weren't expecting to... Uh, to go to go second but they wanted to have a card here where they could if they wanted uh but having like a second salamangrit link monster on the field like having a sunlight wolf and then having another uh like like a Balinx, for example underneath it i think is excuse me a really good uh way of kind of avoiding that because if your opponent makes you go first if they win the die roll and they make you go first that should really put you on guard for what kind of deck you're probably going to come up against. It might be Grand Maggio OTK, might be and any other form of going second deck. And Kaijus are very, very, very strong in going second decks, and they're very, they're very common. I've been Kaiju quite, quite a bit in this game. So if you have like a way to play around it in that, in that aspect, I think it's very important that you recognize the situation that you're in. Whether your opponent wants to go first or second, understanding how to deal with that and how to keep your your Salaman great, great traps live, because that's really what's gonna allow you to survive and and play to the next turn, and you know recover all your materials and then potentially go for an OTK because going second decks are really not the best at putting up negates to stop things like that. They're really trying to just one punch and done. So. So yeah, our opponent's going into Zeus here. Zeus is another thing that is a very strong card against our deck because it just wipes the field. It does not, by any stretch of the imagination, destroy, which is what we need to be able to protect our field with like a Balinx. But luckily we had the uh, counter trap there. Your opponent still has quite a bit of advantage here and we're just being able to slowly and surely just play through it and just keep comboing and so our opponent's going to Quero and sanguine again uh yeah i mean this deck can like also you know recover a lot of its materials so you want to make sure that you're also not messing up and you're not doing things that are gonna make it difficult for you to come back from so in this situation going for an access code play would not really be a great option because our access code will not have protection from any of his back row. So we really want to to make sure that we get rid of the danger cards first and then then go for that. So yeah, there's the game they our opponent surrendered. They saw the writing on the wall. We had the uh update jammer. We we're gonna go into an access code. I don't think they had any cards to stop us. And so yeah, so just a couple games there, a couple things to keep in mind. Uh, you know, hopefully those were uh, some co coherent thoughts. Uh, and yeah, so now we're just going to go on to a couple different strategies, just a couple little combos I think are going to be important to keep uh, a reminder of and a couple of little just tips and tricks that I think are just the most important that I think if you take anything away from this video that this is what I want you to take away from it. So yeah, we'll just get right into it. Okay, in the last part of this video, I just wanted to talk about a couple tips that I wanted to give to, to players to learn really how to you know manage your materials and how to to learn how to play this deck in a way where you're making smart decisions and you're not just throwing games by doing things that are silly and completely unnecessary so i think the first thing to keep in mind is have a good idea of when you want to 
keep the game grinding out. In other words, when you want to just add cards back with Sunlight Wolf and just keep the grind game going, or when you want to, to go for game. Because going for game with access code is like, once you get the cards off the field, once you get the Salamangrit cards off the field, quite often, you're not gonna have the ability to, you know, come back from that if your opponent has a response. So you want to be very careful that when you're doing this, you're in a position where you can protect your 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 ability to, to stay in the game and not just throw all your resources into an access code that your opponent had the, the one out to. You know, if your opponent has like one compulse, what's it called? The like the compulse trap, the uh let's see. Compulse Yeah, if they have the compulsory act it, Excuse me, the compulsory evacuation device. Target one monster in the field, return it to hand. If you resolve access code's effect and then they just had one card in their back row left and they just do that, you're kind of screwed because you're not going to have any, you know, any follow-up for that. And then your opponent might get back into the game next turn. So it's really important to know that if there's too big of a danger, if your opponent has too many cards in their hand or too many cards on field, that going for an access code play isn't always the best option so instead if you want to get rid of back row i would say make sure you have a balance in the in the grave and do a double heat leal play to shuffle back back row then you can target a monster to reduce its attack to help you attack over it uh you know do things like this and just keep adding back the roar add back the rage you know keep just being recursive in a way that your opponent's deck probably won't be able to and so you'll be able to keep adding back your cards and you know if they have cards that they want to 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 draw and they want to set cards for example you can just keep popping them and they're not going to have anything that they can do on their turn so that's one thing to i think keep in mind when to go for an otk and when to just keep playing the grind game and play it safe because playing it safe is more often than not probably the best decision but if you if you have that opening then I think you should be able to go for the access code uh, combo. Another thing to keep in mind is something specifically that has to do with Transcode Talker. So Transcode Talker says, while this card is co-linked, it and its co-linked monsters gain 500 attack, which is nice. Also, your opponent cannot target any of them with card effects. Now, there's one really important aspect to this that I think is something that people don't really take advantage of in this deck as often and it's this this protection from targeting for example if your opponent is playing sky striker i would basically play transcode talker uh turbo try to get transcode talker out as fast as possible not not like really as if it's your end board kind of thing but try and play with transcode talker because all of their cards target all of their cards are going to want to target your monsters, whether it's your transcode or your access code, you know, whether it's to negate, destroy, whatever it is, they want to target. And if you stop them from targeting, this is what has allowed me to go for, you know, OTKs against Sky Striker, a really, really troublesome deck to play against, especially when they have to engage. This is what's helped me quite a bit to do that. So it's 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 something that you should keep in mind. And there are many other cards in this game that target. And so if you see your opponent has a monster that, that targets, keep that in mind. It's a good good thing to to remember. You don't want to be, you know, caught with, you know, a board that you think, oh, I can't get through this, even though you could if you just protected it from targeting. So very important. Again, just some help to get through some Nibiru stuff using Salamangrate Circle to make your Link monsters unaffected by monster effects. Very important. Uh, will the Salamangrates reborn your monsters to keep the uh, the Link monsters on board? And obviously the Foxy, which is the uh, easiest to uh, special from the grave. Uh, and so, yeah, so those are some of just the, the main tips I have for this deck. You know, it's a very, very fun deck, and it's it's one that I've been playing for quite a while now. And I'm always looking to, to you know, tweak it and find new ways of playing it. Uh, I've gotten into a uh, high platinum with this deck twice now, and it's uh, it's looking looking pretty pretty good in this game. And uh, I definitely recommend anyone to try this deck out, have some fun with it. And uh, you know, if anyone in the comments you know has any questions, I'd 
definitely be be willing to to answer them uh give give your opinions on anything i'm always down to have a, a discussion about Yu-Gi-Oh. so yeah i hope this video has helped i know it's going to be a bit of a long video but you know i just wanted to get as much of my knowledge as i could come to mind that could that i could think of out there to help people who who might want to learn the deck who might find it you know kind of complicated or think that they're not really uh using the deck to the best of their ability so uh yeah thank you all for watching and uh yeah have a 